Now that we have discussed the case fatality rate, let's move on to talking about the famous and mysterious metric called the basic reproduction number. But before we begin, let's imagine what it takes for an epidemic to spread in a population. First, a susceptible individual gets infected by a virus. Once an individual is infected, it needs at least one other person for the virus to spread in the population. Once individuals infect more than one individual, then the number of infections will increase exponentially, as happens during an epidemic. This is referred to as the basic reproduction number, also known as R0. At the start of an epidemic, a single infected individual will infect R0 more individuals, after which the newly infected individuals will also infect R0 more individuals until the epidemic reaches a peak and slows down. So how do scientists actually calculate the R0? There are different ways to calculate R0. One way is quite intuitive. The number of people that someone infects will depend on the number of days they're infectious, the number of susceptible people that they meet, and the chance that a meeting leads to an infection. Therefore, washing hands and avoiding crowds reduces R0. We can slow the epidemic by keeping R0 below 1, so that infected individuals are generating less infections. The course of an epidemic depends on a number of key epidemiological factors, some of which scientists are still learning about. First, there may be considerable presymptomatic infectiousness. This makes early surveillance and control of this epidemic crucial because transmission can potentially take place before the onset of symptoms. Asymptomatic cases are another uncertainty. Estimates suggest that 80% of COVID-19 cases are mild or asymptomatic, implying that symptom-based control is not enough. Lastly, the length of the infectious period for COVID-19 remains an uncertainty. For instance, influenza A has a relatively short infectious period, but in the case of COVID-19, it may last up to 10 days or longer. If we know the R0, then we should know a lot about how a disease is spread, right? I mean, the R0 is super important because it describes the potential for how fast an epidemic can grow. But like we mentioned earlier, it describes the average number of secondary infections in scenarios where no one has previously had the disease. As you can imagine, in many situations, some individuals have already had the disease, and so the R0 isn't so predictive. It is not set in stone, and many features of how an outbreak plays out will influence these numbers, and especially the R0. We must be mindful of this. And this explains why you see varying R0 values in so many different settings. This continues to be an area of inquiry. We're always curious as to why it, the disease appears more contagious in some settings than others.